Okay, the last topic under plant assets is the end. So we're done with them, we throw them out, or we sell them, or we trade them. And the issue is how do we account for it? And it's really pretty simple. First, if we're still depreciating the asset, if it isn't already fully depreciated, we'll book any depreciation to the date of the disposition. Secondly, we'll take the asset off our books. Remember, we originally put it on our books with a debit, so we'll take it off with a credit. We'll take the accumulated depreciation off our books. Remember, accumulated depreciation usually has a credit balance, so we'll have to remove that with a debit. We'll book the consideration. Consideration means what do we get? Do we get cash? Do we get a note receivable? Whatever it is. And then we'll balance the journal entry. Losses are recorded as debits and gains are recorded as credits. If we sell an asset for more than its net book value, that's going to be a gain. If we sell it for less than its net book value, that's going to be a loss. Let's do a couple simple examples. We have a piece of equipment that we originally paid $100,000 for. We depreciated it to the tune of $60,000. And now let's say that we throw it out. Well, if it's got uh, accumulated depreciation of $60,000, that means it's got a net book value of $40,000. $100,000. Minus sixty thousand is forty thousand. So if we throw it out, it should be a loss of forty thousand dollars. So let's assume that we've already booked the depreciation to the date of sale. We take the equipment off our books with a credit. We take the accumulated depreciation off our books with a debit of sixty thousand dollars. And to make that journal entry balance, we need another forty thousand dollars worth of debits. That's called loss on disposition. In our income statement, that's going to show up in other. Uh, losses or expenses. It's not part of our operating income, so we break it out separately below operating income because we're not in the business of selling used equipment. We're in the business of hamburgers or grocery retailing or whatever it is. So that shows up in other losses and expenses. Okay, same piece of equipment, but this time instead of just throwing it out, let's pretend like we sell it for $50,000 cash. Well, we already know that the book value is $40,000. $100,000 minus $60,000 of accumulated depreciation means the net book value is $40,000. If we sell it for fifty, dollars we should end up with a gain of $10,000. And remember, losses are recorded as debits and gains are recorded as credits. So let's do it step by step. Let's assume all the depreciation expense has been booked to the date of the disposition. So we'll take the equipment off our books. Originally had a debit balance of $100,000. So we'll credit equipment for $100,000 and take that off our books. We'll take the accumulated depreciation off our books. Remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It has a credit balance. So to make it zero, we're going to debit it for $60,000. Then we'll book the consideration. What do we get paid? $50,000. So does that journal entry balance? We got $110,000 worth of debits. $100,000 worth of credits? No, we need another $10,000 worth of credits. And sure enough, that's our gain on disposition. Again, since we're not in the business of selling our used equipment, it's just kind of ancillary to what we do. We're going to record that gain and include it on our income statement on something called other gains and revenue or other revenue and gains. So it's separate from our operating income, but it's absolutely going to be on our income statement. So when we're finished with a piece of equipment or a building and we're getting rid of it, we book depreciation of the date of disposition. We take the asset off our books with a credit. We take the accumulated depreciation off our books with a debit. We book the consideration, cash, note receivable, or maybe a trade property. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we balance the journal entry. Losses are recorded as debits and gains are recorded as credits. And before we even do the transaction, we know that if we sell it for more than net book value, that's a gain. If we sell it for less than net book value, that's a loss. Exchanges are more complicated. We'll always record losses on exchanges. We'll look at the fair market value of what we got and compare it to the net book value of what we gave up. And if it's a loss, we'll always record that. We'll only record gains if it's a transaction that has commercial substance, if it's something that really happened. 